Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Well, it's Bible study night. It's a time for us to get into the word of God, to delve into scriptures and see what God has to say about it. Once we find out what God has to say, we come up to it and great change shall be in our lives. I thank God for you tonight. I want to thank God for all of you all over the world. I thank you so much. And it's so good to hear from different ones. I know you're there and I'm praying for you. I know that God is moving and doing great things. I tell you, the testimonies are awesome. What we're hearing of what the Lord is bringing to pass, how God is manifesting his unadulterated word in the lives of the believer. I thank God for you. I thank God for all of those that he has strategically placed in position in this hour that God is using in helping mankind to move forward in this day and in this time of need. I thank God for all of you that God has placed in professional positions, in uh, essential places, as well as places of service. I thank God for those that he has blessed us with here at Kano's. It is a true blessing, and I don't take it for granted that we are serving God through serving you. And I found out in his word, when you pursue promise and you serve God and you are given, I want you to know it puts a fence about you. Oh, and no one can successfully be your enemy. God is so good. I thank God for you. Well, it's time to get into the Word. You ready to get into the Word of God? I've got some scriptures tonight. So you're going to need your pen and paper or your device where you take notes. And you can begin. It's going to be a scripture I know that God's going to really hit your belly with. That's the one you need to grab right down. And then the rest of this week, you need to just get into the Word of God and just pulverize that scripture because God has more that he's going to put in your spirit. I'm here to do my assignment that God has given unto me to bring it to you. And then what? It's up to you to eat it. And I believe God, not one word of God shall drop to the ground, but so shall it be in the name of the Lord. All right. Well, let's get right into the word tonight. I tell you, I'm enjoying this want to talk to you tonight from the perspective of if you think small, you, you will stay small. Think small and you'll stay small. Let's talk about that tonight. I'm believing God for you. I believe that anything is possible with God. I believe that God can take you from the bottom and put you on the top. I believe that God can bring you from the hind side and put you on the forefront. I believe God to do anything but fail, that God is more than able, but we have to follow his kingdom principles. We have to go and submit to what he has spoken unto us. Let's talk about how we can get in that place. Oh my goodness, that you're not looking over your shoulders, that you can sleep good at night, and oh, when you wake up the next day, oh, God has blessed, 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 blessed. All right, so we have to come out of certain thinking, certain mindsets, because if you think small, you'll stay small. All right, let's look at Psalm 78 and 41. That's the first scripture I want to go to, because it's really, really mindful of how the Word of God tells us. Through His Word, we see exactly what God is saying unto us. We don't have to conjecture, come up with our own thoughts about it. Nope, nope, nope. Let's stick with the word and let's go with what the word says. And that frames the whole thought process for us. Right? Right. Uh, the King James Version, Psalm 78 and 41. Got it? It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. My first thing I want to say to you, don't limit God. Do not. Don't limit God. God, think small, you stay small. When you limit God, you're going to think small and stay small. So don't limit God. All right, let's look in the Bible and see how God was limited. I love it because the New Living Translation says, again and again, they tested God's patience and provoked the Holy One of Israel. See, 
And it's just saying they turned back. Yea, they turned back, the King James Version said. And they tested God. They provoked God. They tempted God. And you know what? They always talked about going back to Egypt. You know it's right there in Numbers chapter 14. And they were always trying to uh, choose a captain to lead them uh, back to where God had brought them out from. You know, it is no need to turn back on anything. Whatever God brought you out from, you need to move forward. Don't turn back. Don't release the, the progress that you have made because of it just seems to be difficult at the time. All right? And they turn back from the Lord. See, when that happens, when you start turning back in your mind, let me tell you, then you got to start the thoughts that you're thinking and all that. You get in a backslidden state. You stop You stop following on, going on with the Lord. And many times it happens. Sometimes you feel you have arrived because you've got what you haven't had before. Many times you feel like it's just too difficult, you know, to go any further. It was just too much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you begin to turn back from the good ways of God uh huh, in your life, all right? You begin to choose your own way. You begin to follow your own thoughts. You begin to go after idols. This is what they did, uh huh. and you begin to, begin to see that you uh, uh not doing what God wants to be done, and that's tempting God. You begin to tempt God. That's what, that's what that means right there. Glory to God. And they did it. And this Bible said they did it again and again and again. In other words, they were getting farther and farther away from God. Oh, yes, they did. And so much so, you know, they didn't even make it to the promised land. There are blessings that God has that you won't even acquire and, and begin to receive when you begin to pull back. We have to keep moving forward. All right? We have to keep moving forward. And so we see that they began to... Um, go in their own thinking, move back to their old ways. And so the Bible says that limited the Holy One of Israel. That's what limits God. When you when you refuse to go forward, when you start thinking the way you used to think, when you start saying what you used to say, those things that God brought you out of that began to move you forward into success and you find yourself going backwards because times got a little rough, got a little, no, no, no. That's when you press forward. That's when you go forward. That's when you're going to see the miracles of God. That's when you're going to break through into another level. That's when you're finna go up higher. You know, adversity comes just before the blessing. Remember that. <laughs> adversity comes just before the blessing. That's the time that God's getting ready to open up. Uh-huh. Show you some new things. Uh, do some greater things in your life. Oh, glory to God. That's when you're getting ready to see uh, uh, God began to align and bring order to all that the enemy tried to confuse and scatter all about. You remember in Ezekiel, oh my goodness, when God took Ezekiel up, it was a hard time at that time. Took him and showed him a vision. It was a vision of dry bones, the Bible says, the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. And you know what? And these dry bones were all scattered. If you study it out, they say that those dry bones represented the, the nation of Israel, how they had been scattered all over the world. You know, they were scattered everywhere into new cultures, everything. God showed Ezekiel these dry bones. and In other words, just impossible. All the life was gone. It was totally impossible. And he asked Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And there's a difficult thing that God would put before you when it seems like, oh my goodness, I was trying and, and everything was going well. And you know, it's, it's going to be valley situations. Oh yes, those dry bones that were there in that valley. Oh, valley of dry bones. There'll be valley situations in your life that the enemy wants to take you back and pull you off of your declarations of faith, pull you out of your time of prayer and scheduling God in your life. Because the enemy will say, what use? Look what it's got you. But the devil is a lie. That's when you continue to hold on. You don't give up because time are tough. You don't give up because it's a valid situation. I'm telling you, that's when God's going to break you through into greatness. Greatness is on the way. Oh, hallelujah. You know what happened there. God began to tell Ezekiel what to say. Let me tell you, he began to let him know, even though you don't know what to say, even though it looks like it's impossible, 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm going to bring life in this situation. Don't give up. Don't let go. Well, the children of Israel did. They turned back. They began to think their old thoughts, so much so they started saying it out of their mouths. They began to act it out in their lives and grabbing hold of idols and doing all those things. It, it, that tempted God. They provoked God. Glory to God after all that God not only did and was doing and had planned for them as well. And so then they, as they began to do that, they began to limit the Holy One of Israel. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. Continue to speak words of faith. Continue to declare. Continue to pray. Even though I know sometimes, you know, you get in those valid situations. It's just like, Lord, do you hear me? Are my prayers hitting the ceiling or are they going on through? Well, I'm here to tell you, they are going through. God is hearing your prayer. This valid situation is because what? You're getting ready to break the ceiling. You're going to break through into a greater place <laughs> that God has for you. But you do know what the children of Israel did walking around in that wilderness, going in circles for 40 years. You do know it was only an 11-day journey. They were right there. Oh, I'm telling you, when you limit God, it slows you down. When, it limit, when you limit God, I'm telling you, you stop making progress. When you limit God, you, start, you keep doing the same dumb thing over and over again. <laughs> Don't limit God. Hallelujah, just because time seems tough. Don't limit, limit God just because it gets uh, difficult. No, press on through. You're getting ready to get a breakthrough. You're going to find out you can do more than you thought you could do. <laughs> You're going to find out that your God is bringing you to a place of greatness that you've never seen before. Oh, my, 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 my. Woo! Ah, mm. And I'm telling you, you think small and you'll stay small. Don't limit God. Hallelujah. And you'll see, you see, as you begin to move into what God wants you to move into, Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 20, you'll need to read that whole account there. And you'll begin to see how uh, I, I, I can I can. Mm, synoptically view it for you in the message Bible, but how Paul was writing, I love Paul's writing, how God wants to enlarge your capacity uh, to receive what he's got for you. And you do it by enlarging your thinking. That's how, that's how you enlarge your capacity. You enlarge your thinking. And so Paul said here in verse uh, chapter three of Ephesians, my favorite book, uh, verses 14 through 20. You need to read that whole thing to get it. So I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. It's a little shorter, but it's still capsizing uh, what's being said. Paul said, talking about he wants you to get to a place where you begin to comprehend. When things get difficult, when things get hard, when things look impossible, when it seems like nothing's moving, nothing's, you know, everything's the same. I thought it would be different. I thought a change would come. Look what he says right here. He begins to write. That what we've got to begin to understand so you can comprehend. Paul, what did Paul do? Paul said, my response was to get down on my knees. Ooh, before the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. You know, when you start praying, the first thing you want to do is enter into praise. That you begin to say, I thank you, Father. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. I love you, God. I Thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're going to do. Oh, let me tell you, you're not thanking God for the problem. You're thanking God for him being great. You're magnifying him for the depth of your praise determines the magnitude of your harvest. And oh, you begin to praise it. When Paul said, I'm going to fall down on my knees. Oh, my God, my God. Before the Father. <laughs> before the one, oh, glory to the God, that I can cry out to ever, Father, before the one, oh, that got my heart in this situation, and I got his heart in it. Oh, my God. Mm. So let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. I'm reading from the message uh, translation. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit, not a brute spirit, but a glorious inner strength. Ooh, 
Oh, glory to God. Oh, oh, glory. To, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. <laughs> you know, you begin to pray and you begin to say, Father, oh, you, uh, you're the God of love. You got everything that I have need of. I thank you, God, now that you just give me strength to go through this. I thank you, God, you empower me the more. This is what Paul was praying. Oh, glory to God, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And look at Paul. He said, and I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love. Oh, my, we're going to talk about that more. And you'll be able to take in with all Christians the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Listen, listen. Reach out and experience the breath. Take its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Oh, Paul was such a great, eloquent writer. Live four lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. Mm. His spirit deeply and gently within us. <laughs> Ooh, God. Isn't that awesome? Oh, don't, don't, don't those words just permeate your very being? This is Paul talking. And he's saying, once this happens, how God will enlarge your capacity to receive the enlarged thinking. That's what he's saying there. God will do it, not harshly, but gently within you. Oh, as you just begin to thank him for his goodness. Uh-huh. Stop thinking about the problem so big. Think about the big God you have. That's what he's saying right there. Don't dwell on the problem. Dwell on a big God. When you do that, oh, that problem will shrink. Because <laughs> God is so big. Oh, yes, he is. And once you begin to see the see pop pulling you into big thinking, larger thinking. See, because your ability to receive is directly linked to your ability to comprehend. Comprehend the depth. The height, the length, the width of God's love. See, see, that 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 is a determining factor in your ability to receive from God. It's linked to how much you comprehend, how you can understand, how much you can receive of. Mm -hmm. All right. Think small and you'll stay small. Think big, you'll go big. <laughs> All right. So he said here, you gotta begin. To comprehend this. The Amplified Bible says, apprehend and grasp. I like that. Apprehend and grasp. Apprehend and grasp. Mm, mm. See, if you can mold it in your thoughts, you'll eventually hold it in your hands. Oh, my God, my God. See, one of the keys to molding something in your thoughts is the desire. Do you desire to pray? See, you need a desire to pray. You need a desire to pray. You know, when you first came into uh, your relationship with Christ, oh, it was just so much joy. You just loved getting up. Oh, it was the joy, the joy of Jesus down in your soul. When adversity comes, ah, oh, the enemy tries to steal that joy. Don't let him have it. Don't let him snuff your light out. Don't let him pull you away. Mm, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The enemy knows that. Oh, glory to God. If you can apprehend and you can grasp that if you can enter into a place of praising God, if you will not limit God by, by moving into that place of prayer and praise, you'll get into an atmosphere that you'll see how big God is, that you get your mind off of your problem and you get your mind up on heavenly things. I'm telling you, you'll begin to see the atmosphere shift all about you. And if you can apprehend and grasp, take hold mm, mm, of this in your thoughts of what God is doing, then you will eventually hold it in your hand. Oh, hear me well on this evening. This is one of the keys. One of the keys of molding something in your thoughts. It is desire. Yeah, desire. Desire comes to pass. Oh, yes. 
Because when you see, when you start lining up with what God has said, it's not something you already have. This is what God's going to do in your life. That's what he'll do. When the enemy was trying to keep you from receiving and seeing what God has next for you and have you looking at, looking back and moving back and pulling away, the devil is a liar. And he's trying to keep you from something greater that if you'll fall down on your knees and start praying to the Father and just start beginning to just love on him. Oh, yes, that's why Paul said I had my feet planted in love. Begin to love on him. God will begin to show you his greatness, his vastness. Oh, how deep his love is for you. How deep his love is for the plan he's got for you. Oh, how it's unending evermore. You grasp that and hold on to it. Oh, don't let it go. I'm telling you, you are going to end up, it's going to manifest itself. But it'll start with a desire. As you begin to daily, the heart of the enemy try to hit you, nothing is too hard for God. Daily, you begin to grasp and hold on to that, that God has said. Oh, let me tell you, it will become a reality in your life. Desire. Desire means intense longing. God showed me something. He's always showed me things. But I'm just going to deal with recently. In 2019, God showed me something. And I only shared it with two people. And and uh, <laughs> I tell you, and, and I knew I didn't let go. I didn't let go. When things got difficult and hard and seemed like it wasn't going to happen because of the pandemic, you know what? I'm telling you one thing. That was when I, I stayed in prayer. I just stayed in prayer. I believed God. And oh, it got even worse. Ah, I continue to believe God. I believe God. I knew what he showed me. I believe God. I revisited it. I said, God, was that me or you? But uh, Lord, and that's when he let me know, without a doubt, it was him. And as he, when he came, you know, sometimes you need that second touch. Come on here. And when he came and I received that second touch for him in the midst of the pandemic, Oh, I tell you, everywhere I went, no, 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 no. But God, oh, that desire was down on the inside. I'm telling you, when you get that desire, there's nothing Satan can do to have you turn back. Because what? You've apprehended and you've grasped it. Oh, glory to God. You've seen how big your God is concerning it. Oh, my God. As you begin to praise him and lift him up, you know that you know that you know. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. You understand. You have apprehended uh, because you comprehend what God is saying. And that desire is there. That intense longing. Oh, my God. That God's going to do it. Not because of, but in spite of. Oh, 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 oh. Everything that the enemy tried to say, no. But when God has said, yes, no turning back. None. You move forward. And that the God has said, oh, I tell you, I love the Lord. <laughs> I love the Lord. I love the Lord. That longing, that desire comes. And when you truly desire something, it's easy to imagine yourself having it. Oh, you better hear me. Oh, yes, it is so. When you truly desire something, easily you can imagine, begin to think of <laughs> yourself having it. Let's look at the scripture. Mark 11, 24. What things soever you desire, when you pray, oh my God, what things soever, whatever it is, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Oh my, my, my. See, when you see it in the word, when you see what God is saying in the word and you desire it in your heart, then you begin to imagine it in your thoughts. Oh my God. Mm, mm, mm. You, if you start believing, oh, it's mine. You say, oh, it, it, it's mine. It's mine. And you know what the result will be? You're going to have it. Ha! Ah! Oh, glory to God. See it in the Word. Believe it in your heart. Imagine it in your thoughts. Oh, my God. You'll start saying, it's mine. You're going to have it. I said you're going to have it. Ha! Ah! Glory to God. I personally like to use visual tools. Yeah. They help me to stay focused. I like to put a picture up. I've been doing that forever. <laughs> uh, I put a picture up back in the 80s of a white, high gloss baby gray. God gave it to me. I hadn't seen it anywhere. God gave that to me. I'd seen baby grands before. Yes. I'd seen black ones. I'd seen brown ones. 
I had not seen a white high gloss. God put that in my heart. So then, you know, I, I, I found a picture of one and I put it up. Oh my God, in my prayer room. And I want you to know, I began to pray. I began to pray. I said, Lord, I'm believing you for this. I'm believing you for this. And the, from that, see, when you begin, you're going to have it. When you apprehend and grasp it, God will begin to show you strategically what to do and how to do, what to do to, do, to go about it, where it is, how it is, all of that. God did all of that. And I want you to know, by the time we moved into our new edifice, oh, I'm here to tell you, oh, we're not there anymore. And we still have that piano. Oh, that baby grand white high gloss piano. I'm telling you, they put it up in the place, and then we moved to our new edifice where we are now. They put it up in there. Why? What are you saying to me? I'm saying this. I want you to know that sometimes you need an aid, and the be best tool for an aid is a visual aid. Oh, it helps tremendously to help you stay focused because every time you fall down on your knees and pray, you've got it there in your prayer room or you have it there before you. Oh, yes, it makes a difference in your life to put the positive things around you, put a picture around you, put a plaque up, put something up that, that lines up with that, that, that desire on the inside that you receive from falling down on your knees in prayer that you have grasped and apprehend what God has that's next for you. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And God will do it. God will do it and he'll do even more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. From that came a white high gloss uh, Hammond organ. Oh, yes. See, see, God will just begin to do more. He'll begin to stretch you. He'll begin to stretch you. Oh, and then that vision that I told you he gave me in 2019. That's why I don't have to go back to the 80s. I can come right here to today. I'm telling you, he just began to stretch. He began to stretch. He's done more and more and more. God will begin when you apprehend, when you apprehend and grasp what he's saying from falling down on your knees in prayer. Woo! Mm, let me tell you right now. You, you see it in the word, uh, what God is doing. Oh, he'll, he'll take you right to it. He'll, he'll bring it right through. You begin to desire that in your heart. Oh! I'm telling you now, and you begin to imagine it in your thoughts. I began to just, you know, start seeing it being done, seeing it being done. Oh, my God. After a while, you go from imagining, that thing is yours, from believing in your heart. Oh, yes, oh, yes. From seeing it in the Word, oh, yeah, It's mine. It becomes a reality before it's a reality. You have to see it before you see it. <laughs> it will happen. It will manifest. Oh. <laughs> Got to do just what he said he's going to do. Oh, but if you think small, you'll stay small. All right. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Okay. So when you start seeing it on the inside, you're going to see it on the outside. Whatever you see on the inside is what you're going to see on the outside. If you think small, you'll stay small. All right. You got to become convinced that God intends to do just what he said he would do for you. God wants you to be a winner. He wants you to be a winner. Glory to God. And if you don't, then Satan will convince you that you are not a winner. If you think small, you will stay small. Uh, all right, let's go again to the Word. Let's go to Romans 14. Let's look at Romans 14, uh, verse 5. Go there. Go there. Romans 14 and 5. Amen. Romans 14 and 5. I'm going to go there. I want to go here in my... Okay, I have it right here. I like to turn because so, I know sometimes you're going there and I want to give you time to get there as well. I'm going to read from the Amplified. It said, one man esteems one day as better than another, while another man esteems all days alike sacred. Let everyone be fully convinced, satisfied in his own mind. Now, um, go right there. Go right there. It, it, it said, let every man... Okay, be fully persuaded in his own mind. Uh, whew. See, the mind is something. The mind is something. He said, you got to be fully persuaded in your mind. You shall have mm -hmm, what you say. You shall have what you think. You shall have what you have dared to imagine and apprehend and grasp it and say that's mine 
it will become a reality. But you've got to be fully persuaded in your own mind. I can't come to you and tell you this, that, or the other. You've got to receive it by faith and then what? Hold on to it. Prayerfully submit it. Yes, think about it. See, you got to do your part. You must engage in this that I'm saying to you tonight. I'm telling you, there's no crystal ball to this. Oh, this is a walk of faith. <laughs> I love it where the Amplified said, convinced and satisfied. Ah, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, some people, they're convinced and they can, well, you know, I know I got it, but I'm not, I'm not I got to let this go because I just, you're not satisfied with the greater things. Oh, no, oh, no, but convinced and satisfied. Now, I'm not talking about mind over matter. I'm talking about renewing your mind. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, yeah, through constant fellowship with the Word of God. You get in that Word. You start seeing what the Word says concerning you. I'm telling you, you'll see that God has great plans in store for you. Oh, mm, uh-uh. Don't think small, because you'll stay small. Stop it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But if you will start getting into that Word of God by renewing your mind, by constant fellowship with His Word, that's why I said there will be a scripture tonight that you, or several scriptures hopefully, but definitely one that you need to study out and, and pulverize it. Uh-huh. Through the week, you know, when you pulverize meat, you can't even tell it was meat because it's all everything. It has changed to another form. You need to take this scripture off of the pages in this word of God. You need to take the scripture and begin to bring it in, make it alive to you. Mm-hmm. Take it off the pages. Put it in your heart. Oh, if you dare to do it. I want, oh, everything that God says is yours is yours. Oh, glory to God. Nothing, absolutely nothing can stop you. That's the next place I'm going. When you got a made up man, hmm, nothing can stop you. Let's look at Romans 8. Look at Romans 8. Go to Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. I'm going to read it. it it's going to bless you. I, I know we read it several times, but it's going to bless you real good. Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. For I am persuaded beyond doubt. Mm, that means you're sure. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, wasn't that good? Mm -hmm. Look what he said. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. See, when you're persuaded beyond doubt, that doesn't mean that your mind will say, well, can't, I don't know about that. Can you do it? But you're persuaded. In other words, it doesn't matter about what issues may present themselves to me. Even from my own mind, I'm persuaded beyond doubt. See, he was fully convinced. Paul was convinced that nothing was going to stop him. Nothing. Mm -hmm. He was at the point, okay, whatever it takes, I'm all in. <laughs> Not even Satan himself could stop it. Whatever it takes, I'm all in. I got a made-up mind. See, that made-up mind is something. Uh, shut the door on doubt. Acts 20 and 24 says, But none of these things move me. Paul again. <laughs> but none of these things move me. Mm -mm. No, that's Peter. Acts. You know what, people of God? You've got to be set. That nothing, no matter what Satan does, no matter what even your own mind would say, no matter what voices that might try to penetrate your inner ear. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But that you are fully persuaded. Your mind is made of, I am sure. Hands down. Mm, glory to God. I'm persuaded beyond doubt. That's an awesome statement there. Glory to God. Nothing can stop you. That's what you need to say. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking small. You'll stay small. Mm -mm. Think small, you'll stay small. Oh, but Paul said you got to be fully persuaded. 
beyond doubt. <laughs> Be so sure. Nothing moves you. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. Yes, yes, go there. He said, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded, oh Jesus, that he is able. Ooh, my, my, my. Ah, oh, my, 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 my. Ooh, none of these things move because I'm persuaded. For I know in whom I believe. He's able. Mm. Now, these are not of the confession of, of a, a man who thinks small. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Man, old woman, come on. But this is Paul talking. This is not the confession. Uh -uh, mm -mm. He's letting us know. You're going to have to be persuaded beyond your own doubt. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is, and even yourself. You have to be persuaded. No. Oh, oh, oh. Be so sure. Surely, surely, barely, barely. Guarantee, be convinced nothing can stop you from moving forward and getting the manifestation that God has said. Oh, glory to God. That that God showed you. That that you apprehended. That that you grasped and pulled to yourself. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That that you got into the word and you believed the word. That that you were there on your knees before the Father every day. Mm, I know I said something there. Got into the word. Got the desire in your heart. You better hear me now. Begin to imagine it in your thoughts. Ooh, apprehend it. Ooh, grasp it. It's mine. It's mine. Use your visual aids if you need to. Use them. It's all right. It's mine. It's mine. I'm going to have what God said. I'm convinced and I'm satisfied. So what? Oh, others may come along. They're getting blessed. Oh, you can praise God with them. Why? Because I'm convinced. And I'm satisfied. God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Oh, oh, I'm sure beyond a doubt. Oh, God is going to bring it to pass. Oh, 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 oh. oh nothing Satan can do. Mm, mm, mm. None of these things move me. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. For I know in whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able. Isn't that good? Mm, mm, mm. Oh. Hey, you start doing that. Ain't no small thinking there. No small thinking. Oh, glory to God. Think small. And you'll stay small. Think big. Big things are happening. Paul said, I'm persuaded. I'm going to get what God has shown me. I'm going to get it. I desire it. I got a, a longing on the inside. Oh, whew, glory to God. Intense. Oh, oh and we're going to keep moving. Mm, mm, mm. See, if you're ever going to experience the fullness of God, you're going to have to get rid of your mental blocks. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to get rid of those. you got to get rid of your mental blocks. I just felt that in the spirit. You know, you can shape yourself for a better future if you start reshaping your thoughts right now. Right now, start reshaping your thoughts. You know your thoughts are stinking thinking. Start reshaping them by the word of God. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's go there. Let's go there. The Amplified. Oh, come on. Oh, this is good tonight. Oh, yes, it is. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for your welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope uh -oh, in your final outcome. Oh, Oh, my God, my God, that was good right there. Ooh, for surely there is an end, David said in Proverbs. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, let me tell you, to give you hope in your final outcome. Because as you get towards the end, Satan really tried to do a rope and dope on you. Oh, but God says, I know, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to do these things. That's that second touch you need. That's that second touch that needs to come as you're down there on your knees. God will just, oh, he'll just bless you so that you get up. And, oh, it's just so, so good. <laughs> you see, and, and, and look at how, what I want you to notice here in Jeremiah 29 and 11. Look at how God's thoughts are connected to your future. Look at how God's thinking about your future. And it's just wonderful. Glory to God. And so if God is thinking about your future, wouldn't it stand to reason that your thoughts should be on your future? You know, of what God's going to do? 
Your thoughts should be as he thinks. God's thinking about your future. Well, your thoughts should match God's thoughts for your future and his plan. When you get on your knees, that's what happens. Amen. And then what starts taking place? You start overcoming poverty. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Proverbs 10 and 15. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. And let me tell you, God will begin to move in your life. Those things that's been pulling you down, been destroying you. Oh, let me tell you, you start seeing the future God got for you. It can't hold you down. Whatever it is, God will reveal to you. God will show you, oh, that that's been keeping you back in your thinking. That that's been keeping you back in the words that you speak. That that's been thinking you, keeping you back in the actions that you've been taking. Oh, God will reveal it to you as you fall down on your knees and begin to pray. Oh, to the Father and see how big he is and how little. Mm, your problem is, oh my goodness, oh, God is so good. Woo, he starts pulling you out of poverty because poverty, that's a, that's a result of thinking small and staying small. Oh, glory to God. But when you start thinking about your future and the plan that God has for you, that's thinking big. Oh, you start reaching, oh, to the things that God has for you. As strange as it might sound, poverty is not just a financial problem. It's a mental and a spiritual problem. Oh, glory to God. And God is pulling you up out of that. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, glory to God. So what destroys a poor man is his ability to see himself any other way. I've had those said to me. Pastor, God would be uh, moving and I would see the people just moving in obedience to God and giving. And you know what they said? I just would say, just as soon as I saw different ones moving, I would say, that ain't for me. Mm -mm, I don't have, that ain't. But one day, see, see, poverty is, it, 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 it's not just a financial problem. It, it's a spiritual problem and it's a mental problem. The mental blocks, I'm pulling down mental blocks right now. And I want you to know that she stepped out. She, and she tried it. See, in anointing, mental blocks have to come down. She stepped out, and I'm telling you, ever since that day, more mental blocks. Every time she get to one, mental blocks come down because she stayed under this anointing, and she continued to move it. I'm telling you, when she stepped out then, she stepped out back then, change came. Change came immediately. God moved immediately. Mental block had to go, and there's been more and more mental block had to go concerning dwelling, and the mental block had to go. Receiving of the word. Oh, glory to God. When you receive it, my God, when you see what the future God's got for you, you get excited about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, and I tell you, and, and when you start doing that, you can't imagine yourself being poor. But when you will allow the mental blocks to remain, you can't do anything but imagine yourself as poor. Think small, you stay small. Oh, glory to God. Change the way you think, you change the way you live. <laughs> oh, you better hear me today. Glory to God. Because your life tends to go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Remember that. Glory to God. Because if all you think about is lack, lack will control you. Oh, yes, it will. For the rest of your life, it'll control you. If all you're thinking about your bills, your bills are going to control you. Uh -huh. If all you're thinking, whatever you think about, your life tends to go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Remember that. See? And one of the reasons for that is because your thoughts will materialize. They will happen. They'll manifest. This is why you have to monitor your thoughts closely. You got to monitor them. You got to put a check on them. Oh, you better hear me because your, your imagination is a God-given gift. That's why 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 said, cast down evil imagination. See, the enemy tries to come on the, the giftings that God has given unto us. So your imagination, it's a God-given gift. And when it's according to the word of God, it's not an evil thing. And whenever your imagination is going in a direction that is not in line with God's word, cast it down. Mm -hmm. It becomes evil when you can, um, when you lend it, your imagination to adversity, when you lend it to what's going wrong. Uh huh. That's when it becomes evil. But you cast that down, evil imagination. Oh, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, of his word. Bring every one of those thoughts 
into captivity to the word of God. Hallelujah. And you stop saying, I can't see how I'm going to get out of debt. You stop saying, I can't see how I'm going to get well. You stop saying, I can't see how this is going to work out. Stop saying that. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and stop saying, I don't see how I'm going to be able to pay cash for anything. You can do it. You know why you pay your rent every month? Because that's what you see. And it's done. You know why you don't pay it every month? Because you don't see it. You start dreading and thinking lack. And lack is what happens. You know why you pay that house off in less than 30 years? Because you, you see it being paid off. You know why you don't pay that house off in 30 years? Because you say, oh, I'm going to make these payments in 30 years. It'll be paid for. That's what you're, that's what you're speaking. That's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's what will materialize in your life. If you spend enough time in God's word, I'm telling you one thing, you'll start thinking bigger and you'll be able to imagine these things, paying cash. You'll be able to imagine paying cash for a car. You'll be able to imagine paying cash for a home. You'll be able to imagine paying it off early. You'll be able to imagine getting out of debt. You'll be, yes, you'll start thinking on these things. Glory to God. You got to remember, you spend time in God's word and it will enlarge your territory. Oh, yes, it will. You start thinking on God's word, you'll start emptying out the old and you'll start putting in the new. God said, I know my future concerning you. Mm. Mm. You remember, remember now, Im uh, negative imagination attracts negative situations. Remember that. Positive imagination attract positive situations. Remember that. This is commonly, com commonly known uh, as the law of sowing and reaping, known in the world as the law of cause and effect. Remember that. Remember that. If this will happen in your life. Great things will take place. God is a good God. Let's look at Job 4, verse 8. Job 4 and eight. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness weep the same. The message Bible says, it's my observation that those who sow trouble reap trouble. Oh my God. Ooh. Here we see the results of sowing negative seeds. If this law works in the negative, then it also works in the positive. Go to Hosea. Hosea 10, uh, verse 12. Hosea 10 and 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Ooh. Reap in mercy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh. You get in life exactly what you sow. Oh, that's what it's saying to you. It all begins with your thoughts and with your ideas and your concepts. Oh, glory. You get in life what you sow. The most successful people in the world are those who have acquired the capacity to perceive what is possible, even when it looks impossible. Mm. My, 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 my. Whew. They look beyond the obstacles. They don't even deal with mental blocks because they pass on by that. They look beyond the obstacles that's blocking their ideas and, 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 and those, those, those things that the enemy would try to keep them from thinking big. They recognize that, that they got to push through, perseverance. It'll ultimately lead them to victory. They recognize that. They don't mind putting in the work. When you don't mind putting in the work, if you got to work, they recognize that. You see, that you got to invest in that. So you got to put some time and some energy and some money and believe it. You got to do all the principles. You got to add, you know, uh, what God give you. When he bring it to you, you just submit to it. They recognize that it's going to take some perseverance, even when it looks impossible. They understand that's all part of the process. Oh, my, 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 my. Second Corinthians, go to that. Second Corinthians 4 and 18. Go there. Second Corinthians 4 and 18. 18. Mm -hmm. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, 
and the things which are not seen are eternal. Woo, God's getting ready to do a forever work for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Temporary means subject to change. If you're looking at poverty, if you're looking at lack, if you're looking at what you don't have, that's temporary. It is subject to change. If you will begin to think on these things, if you'll begin to see the future that God has for you, if you'll begin to stop, begin to stop thinking small, then you'll stop staying small. It's time to move beyond and past. Oh, even what your parents have. You want to have more. This is what God wants for us. He did, did when Jesus, what did he say? He said, Greater works you're gonna do. Jesus said that that is the way God wants it. He wants He wants every generation to do greater things. Every generation. God's got it already planned. It's already set. It's already set. Glory to God. So no matter what you're going through in this time that is adverse to what God has said, that's trying to keep you in a place of thinking small and in a place of staying small, I'm telling you, it's subject to change. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. The greater your capacity to see the possibilities where others see impossibilities, the greater your success will be. Hmm. Ha. Huh. The greater your success will be. Oh, glory to God. Don't let others keep you thinking small. Don't, don't, don't let them. Don't let them do it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Reach out. Reach for the stars. Keep pressing. Reach. Press it, press it, press it. If you keep pressing on, you'll see, soon be walking in that place. Oh, glory to God. In the fullness of God. Because you'll start saying, it's mine. Oh, 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 come on, say it. It's mine. What God said, I can have, I can have. Ah, think big. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, if you don't, you're going to disappoint God if you think small. You'll disappoint God if you think small. Isaiah. 54, and I'm closing out, because I tell you, I'm in, I'm in my, my lot right now. I love this. Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3. Oh, get that, get that. Go there. Let's, let's look at that as I close out here tonight. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy states. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. In your imagination, spare not to. Oh, if you think small, you'll stay small. Oh, but don't you dare. Oh, I want you to know right now. Oh, glory to God. Where you are is subject to change. Oh, glory to God. Don't let nobody hold you back. Reach. Oh, stretch forth. Oh, strengthen. Mm, reach. You're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left. Oh, I prophesy. Oh, glory to God. This is your day. This is your time to break forth. Oh, don't think small. Don't stay small. Think big. Oh, let God Oh, stretch you forth. Receive the fullness of everything that God has. For you. Ha! Oh, come on, praise it. <laughs> oh, I tell you, that is a shouting message right there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my, 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 my. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, God is so good. God is so good. You want to get everything that God has for you. And I believe God. <laughs> Oh, well, it's offering time. It is time to give. Oh, it is time to submit and obey God in your giving, your tithe, your offering. Oh, release unto the Lord. Do it just like God wants it to be done. When you do that, let me tell you, Ezekiel saw that valley. I'm telling you, but he began to prophesy as the Lord led him. He obeyed God. God took his eyes off of that valley. I'm telling you, you get with God, you can't do nothing but big things. Oh, it said that that valley of dry bones, things begin to shake. God will shake things up around you. God will move things about here, connected just like he said he would. That that seemed impossible becomes possible when you start thinking big and seeing the fullness of what God has for you. He knows his plan, <laughs> and he's got a plan. Oh, and it's good. 
Mm, it'll lead you to purpose and your future. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says there in Ezekiel 37, those dry bones became a large army. Ah, and even God went further. He even opened up graves. Let me tell you, God is ready to take that that the enemy say he's buried, that it'll never happen. He wants to dig up visions. He wants to bring them to pass. He wants to show you how great he is and what he will do in your life. Oh, glory to God. Don't listen to those voices around you. Oh, spare not. Oh, spare not. Just believe it. Believe it. Keep on believing him. God is ready to do great and mighty things right before your very eyes. Oh, hallelujah. The platforms for giving are on the bottom of the screen. I tell you, for you to be obedient to God, all you have to do is the one that you need to take, the one that is accessible for you. Do it. Do it. Do it. And be blessed mightily. I sensed it down on the inside. Woo, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for you. I'm so glad for what God is doing in your life. I'm so glad that you're dare to think big. I'm so glad that you're going to see big things of God. You're going to break forth on the right and on the left. Because, huh, we're not going to think small. And we're not going to stay small. We're going to think big and break forth. Huh, break forth. Break forth. In the name of the Lord. God bless you and I love you.